We are almost at the end of the third quarter in 2020. What a year it has been. But we still have um, three more months that we can utilize in our businesses, in our lives, uh, to make things a little bit better, maybe, because um, as we all know, the second wave, and in some countries, the third wave is uh, upon us. So things will definitely get a little bit uh, more challenging again. Uh, and, you know, we all expected that. I, I was kind of making a list of how many things you can do to uh, close up this year on a strong note. I came up with about 13 and um, I looked at all of them and said that's impossible for anyone to go through. So I said, well, let me just distill it to um, five. And um, that's what I'm going to talk about. And these are five really important things and they are easy at the same time. So it's not like, you know, you have to um, do a lot. So the first thing that I uh, thought would be really important for all of us to do is to figure out what really worked for us in uh, 2020 and do more of that. It's a no-brainer, but sometimes we forget. Sometimes we are, especially as entrepreneurs, we have so many ideas that we tend to just keep skipping from one to the other. And I am guilty of that. I have a squirrel brain, so it's very easy for me to get caught up with new ideas. And obviously those new ideas are fun. So, you know, who wants to try something that I've already tried, but that's not a good thing because if something has worked for you, it's very important to, um, to, to do it over and over because as you do it over and over, obviously, you know, you can fine tune the process and get better results. So that is something that uh, you, you should consider doing. And also look at, at the same time, look at what didn't work as well. What didn't, like you had hoped it would work, but it didn't. And what were the lessons learned from that? Again, no brainer, but things that you don't take the time to stop and do. So I think that would be important. And if you don't know, if you can't figure figure out what exactly went wrong, what didn't, you know, what, you did everything, but it didn't work. Um, it would be important to get help. Like, you know, reach out to somebody you trust. Um, I'm here to help you if you want to uh, just talk to me. Um, and I wanted to show you because in my journal, in my business log, so this is my business log, right? And I have this little, I have these little markers here. So this one is lessons learned right i write down whatever like whenever i made a mistake and i figured something out i always write it down you know lessons learned i have another little tab that says do more right over here then i have another one like for my workshops right so whatever lessons i've learned from doing my workshops so it's it's important and it's it's not that some you know i'm not kind of you know making up these ideas but this is something that i do in my business all the time and it really helps because um you have it there you have it right in front of you so the second thing is a good thing to do would be to actually do um run some holiday promotions that is good for cash flow like think of what you can what you can um, do if you have a product based business obviously there is something that you can run promotions for but even if you have a service-based business, you can still think of doing discounting a service or uh, giving like a buy one, get one kind of th thing or a discount, like a bundle discount, bring a friend kind of thing. If you do a bring a friend, then obviously you have one more client as well. You have a new client in your business. So there are different ways to do it and it's a quick cash flow. But one thing I will caution you though, uh, this year, obviously the holidays are going to be a little bit different because people don't have as much, um, you know, I'm forgetting the word, uh, disposable income, right? <laughs> Gosh. Yeah, so people don't have as, as much disposable income, which means that they will probably spend less on holidays. They will spend, um, yeah, uh, on gifts and but they will still probably buy gifts and if they're not gifting anybody else they will probably buy things for themselves right so um think of what can help them and that could be a quick injection of cash into your business plus new 
clients, right? So that is something that you can think of. So number three would be actually doing an act of kindness. And why do I say that? Because, you know, when you do something for somebody, it's a, it's a great feeling for yourself, right? And it's also great for the person who's receiving it. So it's, it's a win-win. And when you do it at the end of the year and you finish this year with this amazing feeling of having served your, whether it's your audience, done something for your family or friends, whatever, any kind of act of kindness, um, that is something that will take you, you know, every, I know it's all, it all seems like doom and gloom right now in the world, but it really is not. We are going to get out of it. We are going to, of course, it's going to take time, but we will get better up and you know that we've already kind of become accustomed um, to all of these restrictions and um, constraints that we have and we are still surviving Um, not very well for some of us some of us have taken a bigger hit than others but we are still going on we are still continuing uh, and we are positive people Uh, most of us are and I think it would be a good idea to do something nice at the end of the year to finish it strong on a really high note and number four would be to reserve some time for reflection and the reason I say this is we don't take time to slow down and when you don't slow down you burn out and this year has been so difficult it is going to be a very very challenging time at the end of the year especially when we are used to meeting a family we are used to spending time together and it's not going to be that way it's not going to happen most likely it's not going to happen and this is going to make uh, do a number on us and but instead of giving into that negativity instead of getting sucked into it uh, into the negative side of it i think it's a good time uh, to think positively and say okay this is the time that we have for ourselves to reflect back on the year that was what went well what didn't go so well what can i learn what did i learn uh you know what can i do better next year Uh, all of that create a plan for yourself if you don't create business plans yet this is the time to create a business plan for yourself for next year Um, create a personal uh, plan as well Uh, do something that will help you figure out you know what you can do better next year in your personal life so reserve that time most often we get caught up in all our you know frenzy of activities and things like that um, and we don't give ourselves enough time so and i i know i just uh, put out a quote on um, it's one of my favorite quotes at instagram when you get tired learn to rest not to quit so this is something i think it's important especially as business owners that we do that and the final point is um start planning for 2021 and i know that uh, you're probably thinking that oh why i mean we still have three months like over three months left why plan now let me tell you when you take the time to plan you can go back and you can revise the plan review it over and over again and fine-tune it and make it really solid but if you're kind of doing it in the last minute or you're going into the new year and then you and at the end of Jan or Feb you decide that okay I should probably have a plan you've already lost a lot of time right so I think it's better that you start planning like make a rough plan jot things down jot things down about what you'd like to do Um, you know things like what you would like to learn next year Um, what you would maybe like to do for yourself for your family Um, if you know you're going you're planning to hire uh, next year this is the time to figure out who would probably what role you should hire for and who can you ask for help all of these things because unless you start thinking right now like I'm sure there's going to be a long list, but you may not be able to take care of the entire list. So it's going to be a good time to start making that list, do a brain dump, think of everything that you need to do for next year, and then you just keep shortlisting, right? Prioritize and create a a short list of maybe three or four major things that you'd like to do for next year. And then prior two could be something smaller um, and you know you can go like that 
So that would be important as well, because if you want to, um, next year is definitely unpredictable as well. It, we are not sure what's going to happen, but obviously it can't get worse. I hope it can't get worse than it was in um, you know March, April, May, June. Uh, it can't get worse than that. So hopefully we are going to come out of this uh, quickly, and but we still have to plan. But the thing is, your plan should be loose enough that you can turn it around if you have to and but it still should be there you should have a plan so that is it that's all the five things i would um you know i wanted to talk about because i didn't want to overwhelm you and i'll just list out the five things again in the description so you get a quick idea and if you have questions i would be very happy to answer and if you don't, that's fantastic. I maybe you can just let me know that you're if you're going to uh, do one or two or five of, of of the things that I listed. Let me know which one actually uh, resonated with you and which uh, which ones you're planning to do.